has to lament. Uh, so hats off to the good folks at Hills for what they're doing. I love these things when you, we can share knowledge. It's been really fun to listen to the other speakers here. And uh, we'll try and wrap it up with some machinery talk for you guys. And uh, one of the things as I, as I start doing these, I like to uh, kind of tell people how I got started. Because I'm asked that wherever I go, machinery B, how did you get started doing this? And it was back in 1989, of course, it was before the internet. But my father was a third generation uh, equipment dealer in Western Minnesota, where I grew up, Benson. But you might know Benson. Now, who out here watches The, the Bachelor? The show? Okay, the, the girl who just got jilted, what was her name? Becca, Becca Kufrin. Her parents were from Benson. So I tweeted about that this morning, and someone said, Machine Repeat, I never thought I'd see you tweet about The Bachelor. <laughs> oh, but I'm uh, uh, proud of my hometown of Benson. It's really fun. But anyway, my dad, back in 1989, uh, was, as a dealer, he was kind of obsessed with uh, trading values. So he'd take a combine in on trade, and if it sat too long on the lot, he'd get worried. And he wanted to know the hard cash value. If i got to sell this thing tomorrow, what's it worth? So that's, you know, the auction value. So put this thing up for sale, we all work together. So I was 23 years old at the time and was looking for a job. I was an accounting major in college. I'm always just kind of a numbers guy. But my dad, when I was looking for a job, it was November of 89, he called up and he said, hey, why don't you come over and have lunch? I've got something I want to show you. So I didn't have a job. I was looking for work. I went home. My dad slid this book across the desk. So I actually didn't start the business. It was a banker in Morris, Minnesota, 1986, John Botain. It was right in the middle of the 80s in the, in the crunch there. And just the bank, the bank had need for these hard cash auction values. And my dad got a hold of the book and wore the cover off this thing. So that's how I got started. I bought the guy's computer. I'm 23 years old now. I'm in business for my mom. So I just, I got to thank you guys all these years for supporting my stuff. I didn't train as a writer. I had no training in TV. But it's been a really fun journey just uh, following the path. Uh, hopefully our information has been helpful and can also give you guys uh, some fun to talk about the coffee shop. But what we'll do today, we'll talk about some trends in the market. But before we hop into kind of the hard news stuff, I'll start off, I guess this would be a good segue to the bachelor, I guess. But that's my wife, Jackie, and uh, I do have a little advice. We, we actually have a segment on our TV show called Ask Machine Repeat. Now it's obviously usually machine related, but we're going to diverge today and we're going to talk love advice. Now, we got married uh, July 8, 1989. It was 104 degrees, so my first piece of advice is for you young folks. If you're going to get married, get married in October. It's not so hot. Okay. Now, this next piece of advice is for the fellas, not just who are getting married, but also for, for all of us here with our relationship. But when, our first day of our honeymoon, Jack and I started driving. We got married in uh, St. Peter, Minnesota, where we went to college. First day we're driving up to Lake Country, Minnesota. And we're all excited. We just got married. We stopped to get some lunch. Now, there weren't many good restaurants back in the late 80s, so we stopped at Burger King. Plus, we didn't have any money. So we're getting lunch there, and we get our stuff and take off. And we went about 30 minutes and realized, oh, so Jack threw up her purse. So we turned around, went back to Burger King, and we walked up to the front. And you can see Jack is a little shorter than me. And we're standing there, and, and these words actually came out of my mouth. I said, the gal I'm with left her purse. <laughs> and I, my peripheral vision, I saw Jack went like this. <laughs> really? That's how you're going to refer to me? Well, don't see that. <laughs> now, if we get back to machinery a little bit here, uh, on this topic of love, it, it's been a lot of fun telling stories over the years. A couple years ago, I was at Park Fest. Southwest Minnesota, Runway Falls, and I was just walking down one of the aisles. The guy called out and said, Hey, you should be. I went over and it was Arlen Hector, H H Fabrication, and his wife, uh, Pauline. And he starts telling me this story that on the first day of their honeymoon, they drove to my hometown of Benson and bought a John Deere 730 from my dad. And so Arlen's telling me this, and all I want to do is ask Pauline. How were you, you were okay with this on the first day of your honeymoon going to buy a car? And I said, Harlan, you know you've got a winner here, right? Uh, so pretty fun. 
Also met a guy at Sunil, I think it was somewhere in the vicinity here. I think the guy's name was Jacob. I think it started with K. He's an engineer at Kinsey, but we were, we were in an auction. And it just, you get talking to people and things pop up. And Jacob mentions, I met my wife at an auction. I was like, well, I've never heard that before. Tell me about it. So I'll him and tell me the story. And he said uh, his wife, her dad was mad at her. He didn't like her current boyfriend. And he said, honey, you're coming with me to the auction today. You're going to meet a nice boy. Boy was big. There you go. Happily ever after. So one thing that one thing makes me sad about online auctions, you won't get to meet them face to face like that. So, but I've had a lot of fun coming to the auctions. Now, we just got a big snow up in Minnesota here on Monday. I don't know. Excuse me for the comment. I'm quite a little uh, after effect of the flu here. I caught it a little bit. But did you guys get snow down here on Monday? Or was it just rain? Yeah, rain. Okay. Well, this happens every time we get a blizzard in Rochester. I'm just leaving that night before the morning up to go do something. And we, I was on my way to Virginia for the U.S. Army Corps. And now, if you do need to get around in the snow, I just want to give you a few possible options. Now, this was, this was fun. Did you guys know that Alice Chalmers made this M7 tractor in 1944? I didn't even know this until this, this winter, but I ran across this picture. And they actually made that as part of the effort for World, World War II. For in the Italian mountains, it was for downed pilots. They would pull a two-ton trailer with this thing, you know, get up through the, the big mountains there and, and help the day. But again, the innovation there, mid-1940s for Alice Chalmers. Now also, we stay in the state of Iowa here. Did you guys see this Harley huge snow cycle? It sold on an auction in November here in Iowa. 21500 bucks. I didn't even know Harley made a huge snow cycle. <coughs> But it looks like it could get you where you got to go. Uh, another option here, I have a friend up by Dubuque. And on the topic of love, he bought this on Valentine's Day for his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> a bonded year SW48. Honey, I love you this much. Here you go. Have a great Valentine's Day. $500. But again, I think it'll get you where you got to go. I don't think it has air conditioning, but uh, you got to deal with it. Now, I'm a Minnesota boy. The sleds, big deal. A little over a year ago, up in Zabroda, Minnesota, Todd Houghton, great auctioneer, had a sale in Zabroda. He had 200 vintage sleds. And this one was pretty interesting. Uh, this Polar 450. Now, Polar, I didn't know this again, but it's kind of the company that became Polaris before Polaris. This thing, one of the first snowmobiles made, you can see it looks like it's a jalopy there, but 7,500 bucks. Uh, and what fun, you know, at any auction, just to walk down the line. Every piece has a story. So, pretty cool. Now, one more on the snow side. Uh, again, if you got to get around in the snow, I think this will do pretty well. My only advice here is don't fall off the back. It's not going to be good. Okay, uh, big thank you to you guys for following along with our social media Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. Honestly, it's so much fun. Some of the numbers kind of freak me out a little bit. Facebook, this went over 115,000 followers. YouTube is the one that really gets me at all. I posted 1,100 YouTube videos since 2009. And last year, I think it was at 14.9 million minutes watched. So again, thank you guys for watching our videos. We hope they're educational uh, and same kind of fun. But now, some of, the, uh, some of the fun things lately on our social media, I get intrigued by different paint schemes. And this one we ran across, the International 6788, posted in our Facebook page. This kind of took off, people discussing it. Now, when I look at a tractor like that, what I think about is, what, what does that sell for if you put it up for sale today? And my experience has been that anything unusual or rare like this is becoming more valuable. And a couple of other examples, <coughs> excuse me. I didn't, I didn't know this, but actually, if you live in Canada, and you want to order this uh, four-wheel drive 580W in original Steiger green, you can do it up there. Now, if I, if I was a Canadian farmer and had that option, I would do it, just for the purpose that three years later, when you want to trade or sell that thing, that thing makes people go, ooh, look at that. And it's just worth more money. And a proof of concept right here. This was December 2nd. Um, I can't remember, maybe some of you guys remember, Sales in Iowa or Illinois. Um, I think it was Illinois. The 
December 2nd, but that's the all-time record highest auction price I've ever seen on 1570, Spirit of 76, 34,000. It was low hours, kind of like 1,680 hours on it. But again, case back in the day I only made up 200 of those things. And I, if I were a manufacturer today, I would do more of this limited edition special color, maybe throwback type thing. And actually, we just saw one sold yesterday uh, on BigIron.com. This thing was, uh, I think it was Elnora, Indiana. About $55, $5,600 on about 17250 I just saw that last night. Thought I'd throw that in there. Again, unusual paint scheme. Now, it doesn't have to just be attractive. Well, when I was thinking about paint, of course, the first thing I thought of was, was this new Massey Ideal Combine, which the look of it, again, I mean, obviously the machine has to perform, but there's still a the visual component, and it's pretty striking. And that made me think of this machine. How many of you guys remember this one? Massey Ferguson 860. They made one. It was either for a 1981 or 1982 Farm Progress show in Iowa. And if you did that today, the company would kind of probably bring that back to the museum or the you know, manufacturing head or whatever and keep it. But back then it was different. We weren't thinking of one-offs and unusual things like that. So this thing was kind of did the tour for a year or two, and then just got sold. And not too long ago, uh, we found it. Uh, guys online, there's a, there's a discussion group on Facebook. Somebody said, hey, you know where it is? It's in Kansas. And the guy is just in the back of the shed. And he bought it years ago on an auction, and it was not nothing special, just another 860. But if you wanted to sell that, you could market that as a one of a kind. And there'd be some massive lovers around the world that so again, I, I'm always intrigued by uh, kind of rare ones. Now, now this one, I have a friend in Utah, the Stokes Equipment, John New Dealer out there, calls me up, sends me, sends me this picture, he says, Machine Repeat, can you help me sell this? And I'm like, a John Deere Budweiser combine? Yeah, I can help you sell it. <laughs> but it was interesting, he had to get clearance from Budweiser. I don't know why, they had some special deal they wrapped it gave it to a local farm, he traded it in. The Budweiser would not let the John Deere dealer sell it as it is. And I can, I, mean, I can understand it. But at the same time, that thing would have been an awesome ongoing commercial for Budweiser. It was quite the kind of tough battle against all the craft beer. So put more Budweiser combines out there. It will help. Now, our TV show, again, thank you guys. It's been really fun. I started doing TV 11 years ago. With the machinery show and I was really successful farming. I jumped over to Farm Journal Media and started our own show five years ago. It's been really fun. And when I started doing television years ago, I remember the first time we went to film. And the production crew said, okay, machinery team, you gotta film eight segments. And I was like, well, what do you, what do you mean? How long is a second? I was like, well, what, four minutes. And I was like, okay. And then they said, do you want to use cue cards? And again, I'm an accountant by trade. But the only thing I know is this is what we're doing now talking. That's, for me, what works. If it's on a cue card, I'm going to look like more of an idiot than I already look like. And we're not doing cue cards. But we've had a ton of fun. Uh, recently, we were filming an auction in central Illinois. I got a note on Facebook the night before the sale. One of our Facebook followers, Ethan Foster. Now, Ethan has autism. One of our Facebook followers is a sharp young guy, and he said, Machine Repeat, are you going to be the sale? And I was like, Yep, I'll be there, Ethan. And he said, Can I come out? I'm like, yeah, Absolutely, come out to the sale. We worked him into the show opening. Uh, just a bright young guy, hopes to be an auctioneer someday. Uh, so, again, the, the, the people, for me, has been the most fun of all the years. The machines are great, but it's, it's you guys and your stories that's been uh, so much fun. Had a little fun here out in Alliance, Nebraska, this uh, season five for our show. Uh, we, we came to this auction and it was kind of fun. I think the highest price we on the sale was 20000 bucks. But I like that. It doesn't all have to be $200,000 stuff. So this Ford F100 1959 was a factory four wheel drive. Pretty rare. And this is one of the only times I've seen this happen at an auction where they put an item up for sale and the online bid the night before winds up being the highest price. And it was 2800 bucks. Now it was in rough condition, but I had posted a picture of it the week before, and I 
guy saw it and he went online and did, bought it. And he was over the moon to get this piece of history. But we were filming it at the auction and they didn't get any bids. But uh, the online thing is really is changing everything fast. And of course, you guys know that. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But. Uh, I also like contracts. Uh, so we filmed an auction a couple weeks ago in Patasqua, Ohio, right outside of Columbus. And we're filming this John Deere 1244 planner cell. I think this might be coming up either this Saturday or next Saturday. But about a half a mile behind the planner, you can't see it in the shop, but there was a new Amazon fulfillment center being built. You know, massive, you know, sending stuff all over Ohio. So we're standing here filming this whole corn planner. Four row. By the way, that's the third highest market price I've ever seen on a John Deere 1240. So one little side tip here, and you guys in Eastern Iowa, you know this, but six row equipment and four row equipment, don't think of it as junk. It just it depends on where you are. You gotta get that stuff in the Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, it's worth more money. And Eastern and Northeastern in Ohio is also a fiber market. But when I talk to people in Nebraska, Kansas, and they're like, oh, I got the six row planner, it's not worth anything. It's like, no, slow down, look at the data, it is worth something, it's just not worth the cost. So I, I had a lot of fun with that, the uh, user react to different ways. But this one also, we filmed in Ohio back in December, and this brings up kind of probably the number one trend that I would highlight to you currently. Now, this, this track is 97 uh, quad track. About $4,100, $4,200 on it. So for $71,500. And it, you can't really see it in the picture behind me, but it was all one and two year old tractors. And they sold fine. But this tractor was the one everybody talk, was talking about before, during, and after the sale. Because it was in super condition, and it's that age, it's that 20 year old. What I see, once you get to be about 10 years old, that tractor in particular, it's sort of like everyone wants it. And you know the cost of new is way up here, just keeps going up every year. And that nice ten-year-old one is just sort of what people want. And that thing brought seventy-one five, and I was filming it with my iPhone for our YouTube channel. And it was perfect because I'm standing there in this big crowd, and there's a group standing right in front of me. And when it sold, boom, seventy-one five. The guy turned around and he just said, and I was filming, I was like, perfect, you just put the exclamation on the video. <laughs> because that was the highest one in 14 years at 715. Now, we also share stories on the TV show, and probably, this is probably the coolest one I've heard about. This was at Christmas time. Yeah, it was in Wisconsin. I want to say Delroy. I could be wrong on that. But there was a young, young guy, 18 years old, kids standing there, you know, in the lands. That's his brother Tristan and his mom and dad. That's their Ford 7700. Got 13,000 hours on it. Lance's grandpa bought it brand new. And Lance got the idea in November. He said, I want to restore this track. And the reason he said he wanted to do it was awesome. He said, I want to honor my dad, honor our farm, and honor my grandpa. And this thing had, had its work clothes on it, 13,000 hours. But his brother had grown up on it. Now they had it in a back shed. So Thanksgiving weekend, some buddies got mom and dad to go to a movie. And then Tristan and Lance got the tractor out and took it to a local uh, repair guy. And that guy was so impressed with Lance. The reason he wanted to do this, he said, okay, young man, I'll donate my time and my expertise. And he, you know, you pay for the parts. And Lance spent his life savings on this to restore it. Christmas Day, bring it back to the farm. And his brother Tristan had made a video taking old pictures of this tractor. Boys were little, little video clips when they were growing up. And they showed the video and they taped Dad watching the video. Tears just come down his cheeks. And then they take him outside and show him the track. So pretty cool to be able to share that story. And that, that night, Lance's dad went on Facebook and wrote a thank you letter. And I love what he said. He said, You know, it's not the restored iron. He said, That's really special. But it, what's really means everything is the love that went into it. And as I'm 28 plus years in, in the business, that's what I figured out along the way, thanks to you guys, is that it's not all about the numbers. There's the business part, which is super important. We want to help you guys save money. But then there's the, the personal side, and that, that means a lot. 
And also on the TV show, just I think two weeks ago, we highlighted this one. Uh, you guys may have seen this on social media. I took off. But Laura Lewis, her husband, uh, Justin, works for a, a deer dealer in Missouri. I think it's we're down there filming for the U.S. Farm Report. And I didn't meet Justin, but when I got home to Rochester, he said, you know, he said, hey, sorry I missed you. Just want to let you know a little something we got going on. He said, my wife's 34 years old. We have a three-year-old daughter, Caitlin, and we just found out Laura has uh, stage four neuroblastoma cancer. That's a tough one. And his brother, Chris, uh, his buddies got together and restored this 1937 John Deere 8. So it was Chris's, and they're having a raffle. 20 bucks a ticket, and March 15th, they're giving it away with all the money to go to help Laura. And what they're trying to do is buy more time <coughs> with uh, their, their daughter. So we've, we've been hearing this going well. So again, that's on our website. You can find that information. But again, uh, next week they'll be giving it out. So we, we send Laura our, uh, our prayers, hopefully. Uh, she can have a good recovery. And there again, there's the tractor and the family. Really nice family. They're in Rochester uh, this week. And I guess she just had a second round of experimental chemo and they said it went well. So we're, we're rooting for them. Okay, now you guys have probably heard me mention Harold Brock before. I just touched on him recently here because Harold keeps coming up. And if you ever have a free night and you don't like what's on TV, just go to YouTube, type Machinery Pete Harold Brock. You'll find a three part YouTube interview I filmed with Harold three months before he passed away in 2010. And Harold is a guy who's one of the chief engineers on the John Deere 4020. But before that, he worked for Ford, he went to work for Henry Ford himself as an apprentice. 15 years old. So hear Harold tell stories. It was just a treat for me to be able to film it. But I ran I ran into Harold another connection recently. We were filming in Ohio with the owner of the earthquake tractor, which you guys may have seen if you go to Half Century of Progress out there in Mantool, uh, Lee Randall, quite a guy, and we were talking about the tractor. And we went to the back of his office and I saw this, this metallic cutout of an 8020 with some signatures on the back. And he said, Pete, i got to show you this. So we went up there. Let's see if we can get it to go. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but Harold Brock signed it. So, I, you know, I keep running into Harold all over, but uh, quite a guy. And what I find with the farm equipment community is it's really a small world. We're, we're very connected. But again, fun to tell stories. Now, on the topic of 8020s, you guys probably saw this one. I think it was uh, Muscatine, right? Did you? 160,000 bucks a meat sold this new record high price. And I, I, I blogged that 2017 was the year of the vintage four wheel drive track. And so that's, that blew the doors off the previous record, 160. Now, of course, we know the story here. If you haven't read it, it's unbelievable. But when International was going under in 85, they were right in the middle of making three four wheel drive models, and they made two of each. And we got the 7388, 75, and 7788. And back in August, there was a guy in Boca River, Manitoba, and he used to be an IH dealer. And when IH was going under, he agreed he got the first 77 and 7388. And they had low hours, like 2,300, 2,000 hours on. And the 7788 brought 140,000 US and change. The 7388 brought 95,000. Now the very next day, this is amazing, but I get a phone call from Dan Sullivan, Sullivan Auctioneer. And Dan said, Pete, you're not going to believe this. He said, I'm in Moravia, Iowa, talking to a guy about having a sale. And he said, he looked over and he said, what's that over in the fence room? And the guy said, well, I think that's kind of a rare track. So they went and looked at it, and that was the first 75 80. Again, one made two. And the day before, Brothers, the 77 and 73, and he had just sold. Now, the guy who owned it hadn't seen our YouTube video, but it wasn't aware. And Dan said, You know what you got here? And the guy goes, Yeah, I got, a, I, got a, I got an old tractor. <laughs> and then they had an auction. I can't remember the exact name. Were any of you guys at the sale in Arabia? It was unbelievable. I wish I could have been there, but I was traveling that day. But uh, one of the smartest things I've ever seen an auctioneer do. When they were selling that thing. They rolled the truck right up to it. And Dan had, had 
got connected the week before with the original buyer on We saw their big, you know, you guys get saw them on our a big flyer. And he called Saul and he goes, hey, I, that's my tractor, I bought that thing. So when they rolled up to sell it, I was sitting in my office watching the online bid was 80K. And Dan called this guy up on the cell phone, put him on the speaker, and said, I can't remember the guy's name, hey Fred, can you tell us about it? So Fred starts saying, well, yeah, I bought this thing, and I had to sign a parts waiver when I bought it because we can't get parts, it was experimental. I had it next one of years, blah, blah, blah. About a 90-second call. Right when the call ended, the online bid went, went to 100 k You guys remember what it sold for? $151,000. And it was in, by far, the roughest condition of those three. And the cool thing is the same guy bought all three of them. And he's from Dickinson, North Dakota. So I guess we're going to be the beach for an HD camera sometimes. We're going out to North Dakota. But again, that, that was an amazing story. Uh, just a couple other four-wheel drives. A new record price last year. Hopkinton, Iowa, on the 7520, 415. Same sale, I had the 7020.85, highest I've ever seen. Again, this is why I'm saying 2017 with the year the vintage four-wheel drive. Uh, Right? You got, maybe some of you guys were at this. In fact, I know I talked to some folks who were at the sale here in Williamsburg at John Kinsey's auction last about a year ago, March 8th. And the reason I went kind of was for this tractor. It was 8850 with zero hours on the Kinsey repo. And it brought 71.5. It was like obviously the highest 8850 I'd seen in a long time. But again, a lot of interest in it. Okay, let's switch gears a little bit now and we'll hop in and talk some trends. If you guys have any questions or going along here, just put your hand up. I, I kind of like the back and forth aspect. But what you're looking at here is something we just call our machine repeat user values index. Okay? And this is all the 28 years of, of gathering auction prices on everything. And this is my overall report. So this includes all types of equipment. And again, it's quarter by quarter going back to 2003. So if you look at the very end of 2017, notice it went up. Just a little bit there. Actually, a pretty good spot. And it's really interesting. A couple things I want to touch on here because I think they're important to chew on. One is if you look at the fourth quarter, that's now 13 to 15 years use values, auction prices have gone up. End of the year. Okay, why why was that? Of course, you guys know why it's section 179, kind of end of the year, you know, minimize taxes, which is great. But just eyes wide open, that stuff sells higher. Which is why I say, if I were having my retirement sale, I would have it about November 10th. Because if you're just, you know, you're just finishing up, you're starting to look ahead for the next year. You know, why bid the end of the line when you're selling? Let's get to the front of the line. The auction prices will be really strong in November, December. A couple other things to notice here. People ask me all the time, when times are tough like this, uh, when you're talking about any market, so it's land or machinery, the key question is, when values are falling, when do you when do you stop? When do you level off? And I started to see it early 16th. You can see on the graph there, we just level off. Now, used values fell through the end of 13. 14 was the worst. It was about a 22% drop across the board. It didn't matter what color. One, two, five-year-old stuff was just dropping 20% in value. Of course, that was right when dealers were you know, having a lot of inventory, uh, so the market needed to adjust, but it really happened fairly quickly. Because again, by early 16, we were starting to level off. And now, if I would continue this graph early 18, so far January, February, early March have even been a little bit higher. So good condition used equipment is really selling well. And I think one of the reasons, well here, I'll show you. These first two points, these are the things for me. Number one, uh, corn yields late last year came in better all over you know, a huge part of the country than we were thinking August, September, October. We got this late bump. So attitude-wise, you know, that helped. We got a little more money we feel like. Point number two is kind of the big thing that goes back to the graph. You got to go back now. It's five years the commodity prices have been lower. Since so what was it, March? 13 they fell. Now it's going to March of 80, so it's five years ago. So even if you didn't buy new or update your used, maybe you did something every three years and you stretched it out to five. 
that's what we're starting to see now. Is even if you don't want to, you've got to do something. Because you're still farming. And you need good equipment that you can depend on. And what we're seeing is demand going up on the nice, on the really nice condition stuff. Now, what I would say is if the equipment is in average condition, the values on that stuff are continuing to slide lower. The good condition stuff is going higher. And that's even done in the last four months when the number of options has been really elevated. And so on that on that topic, you would say, oh, well, there's we've seen a 60% jump in the number of machinery options. So values must be dropping, right? Because there's more sales. Nope. And that's what I love about the auction price data going back to day one. Because we, we can guess what this thing will sell for, what's going to happen. And you can even look at the final sale price and go, oh, 71000 Well, that's stupid. Why do you have to pay that? that doesn't, okay, your opinion there doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is, boom, about 71 but Some people are going to say, that was why. And other people are going to say, you guys made it, you paid too much. I just like to have one, 71 And then tracking that to see if that's up or down over time. And the other thing uh, that I find really helpful lately is I got 28 years worth of auction prices. We can always track that data. Now, with our machinerybeat.com website, and again, thank you guys for, for uh, going to our site with the machinery. We appreciate it greatly. But we can look at the search traffic <coughs> data across equipment categories and look for trends. So this was really interesting. I don't know if you can see that. But in the fourth quarter, search traffic on planters went up 106%. So people looking, maybe looking to upgrade, either that two-year-old planter with the new technology, and at the same time, we saw this big bump in search traffic. Guess what I saw in December for auction pricing on planners, which had been a tough category. Pricing went up in December, and it's held pretty decent early 18. So I like the search traffic compared to the auction data. And again, you can see all the categories. Combines up 61.5%, skid steers up 80, large horse tractors up 67%. So more people looking. Again, I think this is part of that five-year period. We just—it's been a tough slog. And now, you know, we're just updating. Okay, I want to focus a little bit on combines. We have got some good examples. Here. This again is my graph from my index report on combines. And I, I should say, on the left side of the of the graph is a one to ten scale. And for perspective, look at the number six. Because when I started putting this report out years ago, I said six normal or stable. Now when I said that, and you guys know, there is no normal or stable in farming, right? But when you go back almost 30 years like I do, that's my attempt to, to kind of to, uh, normalize the ups and downs. And what was interesting was, I think it was early 17, John Deere got a lot of flack because they were doing a Wall Street call. And at the time, now again, 2017, early 17, they said, in their quarterly report, they said, well, we think the market is normalizing. And Wall Street just, just chewed them up and said, yeah, what are you talking about? Well, I was, when I heard that, I was like looking at our data, and I'm like, no, they're exactly right. The only problem is we're comparing it back to the period from old, late 07 to early 13, which was an all-time high for the longest period we've ever seen use values be high. So it's a tough comparison to that. Historically, again, you can see kind of in that, kind of in that mid six range. But again, look at the very last fourth quarter, uh, 2017. Combine values went up just a little bit. And we've got some examples here. Probably the sale that really kicked it off it was November 21st in Homer, Illinois. Again, I don't know if any of you guys were over at the sale or watching online, but a 2016 8240. I think it had like 217 separator hours on it, no heads. Around 322. That was loaded. But again, from a hard cash perspective, that's higher, quite a bit higher than I thought it would go. Uh, and people were texting me from the sale, like, Shady B, man, 322, what do you think? Well, I think it's up a little bit. And that's kind of what we started to see from November going forward. Another example, if we look on the green side, there was a day, uh, end of January, we saw 32015 S680 sold. When you're looking at here, I think this was in Iowa. Or this Iowa maybe it had higher hours on about thousand separator. And it brought, you can see, well, I don't have the price up, but I think it was uh, two, 
I think it was 222 on this one. But the same day, a pair was sold on a farm auction in Arkansas. Which, you know, now you're drifting south, it's a little bit of apples and oranges. You're selling two of them, kind of exposed, to selling a little bit soft. And these had about 500 separated hours, and you can see 235, 220. Not world on fire, but not terrible. <clears throat> now, if you break it down, if we take continue this example of just looking at 2015 S680s, Okay, you can see the last five we've seen sold at auction, going back to October, average auction price, just over 241000 Now, one thing I've always been really interested in is the, how the average auction price compares to the average dealer and advertised price. And that goes back to my dad being a third generation dealer, and I'm a dad guy. Now, with our machinerypeat.com website, we can do these calculations, and you can see the current uh, dealer ad price on the 2015 S680 is 282.2. So that's really not that big of a gap between the auction price 241 to change and 282 dealer retail. So this is why I've been messaging since November 15 that if you're able, and if your lender, you know, you have a great partner here with Hill, uh, working in tandem with them, if you're able to be aggressive, now's a great time to be aggressive. Uh, you know, to get that good condition stuff because you know, the values aren't tanking. They've solidified and they're even going up. And the thing I'm starting to wonder about a little bit is if we look farther ahead now, but let's just chew on what happened in the, in the tax law that just passed, the Trump's tax law. Okay, they just doubled Section 179. And what was the, the depreciation period short from 7 to 5? Okay, and now you go back to my first graph we saw huge values go up fourth quarter. And I told you now they've gone up again in the first quarter. And this is in a tough environment. So now let's just go ahead, maybe say two years, or whenever, fill in the blank, whenever commodity, whenever corn and beans go up, hopefully soon. But what's going to happen when they do? Well, that's, I think I know what's going to happen. It's going to be like late 07. You know, because we've stretched this out, guys haven't bought milk for a long time. Um, so if you, if you think about that, again, now is a good time. There's still inventory on lots. It's a good time to be aggressive. It's that old theory of opposites. You know, it's easy to say hard to do. And it's contingent upon your financial strength. But again, now is the time to be aggressive because when things turn up, uh, on the one hand, <clears throat> it might be hard to get a new plant for a new compound because the manufacturers have pitched off production so much. So you'll be in line. And again, we're, we're already talking about some of these auction prices going up right now. Now, are the folks at Sinclair, we've got Sinclair folks here today. I think they were sponsoring the event. And we certainly appreciate that. Actually, one of the most interesting auctions at the end of 2017 was their big dealer auction on December 11th. And it was interesting to me because you had over 20 S-series combines. So, of course, social media, a lot of chatter before the sale, what's going to happen? And anything you have 20 or something, you're selling a late model, and that's a tough, going in, that's a tough deal. But what happened at the sale is the pricing on almost everything was just a little bit higher than what our data would have guessed. And that's sort of what we're seeing at the end of, end of uh, 17, the prices were strong. Now, I couldn't be at the sale that day, I was traveling, but one of my machinery buddies from uh, Kansas was there. And I said, what was your take? And he said, it was he said, I couldn't believe it. He said, it was all farmer fine. And again, that was in December. Prices were strong. Um, so, a couple other combine examples. Uh, this is a little more recently. This was back in the middle of February, about February 20th. Uh, I highlighted this on Ag Day TV, you might remember. But there was an online auction in Michigan with a 13 S660, 600 engine hours, 206.8. Highest auction price on a 13 model at 660 in 35 months. The next day, I know I talked to someone here, uh, I don't know where John is, but he was hoping to buy this 2388 sale here in eastern Iowa, 06 model, 1640, uh, 9 engine on the front, 81. I think John told me he was hoping to go in the 50s. Uh, but again, the, the good condition stuff, that's kind of what we're seeing. And that was the second highest auction price on a 06 model in 34 months. That's a very common theme since November. Nice tractors, combines, when they come up for sale, and we get the price, 
it's the highest or second highest in the last 20 to 30 months. We've seen that so many times I couldn't even begin to count. Now this one just happened on, I believe, Monday out in Idaho. This one really opened my eyes. On 2011, 97, 70, 900, you know, 180, no heads. Okay, second highest auction price on a 97, 70 since January of 15. So again, that's 30, 39 months. And again, in Idaho, so we're seeing these examples from East Coast to West Coast. It's all about condition. And the thing here on the 97, 70 that's interesting, there have been a lot of auctions lately where they've had two combines, a 70 series and an S series. And in every case, it's that, it's that 97, 70 or 96, 70 that sells really high. And I think it's sort of like we see on the tractor side. You, know, you find that really nice one that's a model series older, and that's where the buying heat is. So obviously, 180K on this one on Monday. Now, this one you guys might enjoy. <laughs> column I wrote for the Farm Journal. I was standing at a sale in Minnesota, Fairmont, Minnesota, December 2nd. We were standing by a big quad track, 550, probably 292,000 bucks. And the Minnesota guy turns to me and goes, Machinery B, can you believe these prices? Where are they going to go in 30 years? Okay, and I drove home to Rochester two hours and I said, I'm going to go back 17 years and I'm going to take the highest auction price on a combine for each year and line them up. That's what this is. So back to the bottom there, 2000 the highest auction price that year in a combine is 121000 Who wants to go back to those days? 121k. You can see that the price just kind of kept slowly going up. In 2007, that's when we hopped over the 200000 mark at auction on the combine. And then another seven years up to 2014, we hopped over 300000 But now one thing, look real closely at the last three years of the chart. Since that 340,000 and 14, it's actually gone back the other way after continually rising for 14 years. So, have we found the top? I don't know. Uh, one way of looking at this chart would be in 14 years, the highest auction price in the combine almost tripled, and if it did it again, it'd be a million bucks. So that would be my question. Do you think in in uh, 2032, we're standing at auction and pay a million bucks for a used combine? I don't know. I hope I'm around to keep compiling the prices. But we'll just touch on tractors a little bit here. Same trend, a little bit up in the fourth quarter and early 18, very strong pricing on the good condition stuff. The high horsepower here, you can see again. Notice how since 16, we've leveled off, and now just come up a little bit. I'm just give you a couple examples here. Uh, that John, 2010, 8320. Are uh, almost 1,300 hours on December 6th, Northeast Missouri, 195k. Again, here's that one I was talking about, highest price in 40 months. And on the, on the red side underneath, that MX275, that was November 18th, Northeast Iowa, just going north, you know, 105,000. Very strong price on that 10 year old model. So again, it's all about condition. If we drop down in horsepower, use values are highest. You can see on the 1 to 10 scale here, we're not at 6.7, but we're 8.2. So the thing with these smaller horse tractors is you guys drive around the country here and look at the dealer lots, and you think about 150 horse tractors versus a three or 400 horse tractor. How many are sitting on the lot? There are not as many of these small guys, and you don't have as many sitting there. It's less pressure when they show up at auction. They sell higher. You can look at the first example, probably too small to print there, but again, I'm always interested in the auction price versus the dealer advertised price of similar items. So that 2012 Puma 130, 131 horse, 1500 hours, the loader, November 8th, online auction, South Dakota, boom, 80,000 a quarter. Okay, I go on to machinerypeat.com, I find that the Titan machinery has a similar one priced at 84,000. So how's that gap? 80,250 at auction, 84 on the dealer lot. That's why my index rating is higher for these smaller horse tractors. And on the bottom, that's a picture of a John Deere 7810. Sold in Maryland. Now, this is a kind of an interesting point, but if you talk tractors 175 horse up, you know what the most clicked on model at machinerybeat.com is? It's a John Deere 7810. And the thing is, 
thing to think about here is how old is that 7810? Deer made it 97 to 03. So it's 20, it's, it's what? 15 to 20 years old. Kind of right in that sweet spot. And again, I have 28 years I've been doing this and I watched it. It's, it's held, and in fact, the trend is getting stronger. Or once you get to 10 years old, it's a good condition. Oh, that's what everybody wants. So if you peel that back further, where's the actual point? How about that three to seven year old range with low hours? If you pick one of those up, the dealers, you know, there's a lot still on the lot. Good opportunity to call your dealers, they've got some good deals for you, auctions obviously. But if you get a nice six year old tractor with low hours, in five years you've got a low hour 11 year, 11 year tractor that everyone is going to want. And so it's pretty interesting. But that 7810 two wheel drive about 83 6 in Maryland. And that's the second highest auction price I've ever seen on a two wheel drive. So again, I'm seeing Idaho, I'm seeing Maryland, Canada, down south. If it's in good condition, that the values are strong. <coughs> Same thing with the under 100 horse, you know, 8.4 on my 1 to 10 scale. What you got to pick up here under 100 horse is who's the buyer. So I live in Rochester, we have about 130,000 people. Mayo Clinic employs have about 40 some thousand people. So People with a 401k, how's that been going last year? Straight up. Uh, if you're outside of AG, you're, you're in the corporate world, you probably got a raise or two the last couple of years. Housing values are going up. You got some acreage. That's, I think, why we see when they show up at auction, they sell like hotcakes. And why, frankly, when we talk to dealers around the country, man, they say they're just, they're just mowing through them, they're selling something. So, if we, uh, Let's see, I'm gonna hop ahead here. I'm gonna end with a little storytelling. I like to tell stories. Personally, I think that's how we learn is through storytelling. Numbers and you attach a story to it. Um, I guess the last category I'll touch on is planters. Actually, I was just visiting one of the sponsors for the event, uh, KDK Sales and Equipment, Greg Cook, and Lloyd Heather, visiting with them, and they had just sold uh, this week some components off the planter. That they had the price set where we're thinking here and it sold off here. And I found that interesting because since December I've been seeing auction prices go up on good condition planners if they're spec print, if they're what you guys want. And this pair of DB66s, uh, 7,000 acres, December 29, South Dakota, 224 and 220. Very strong hard cash price. So planners have been bouncing up a little bit. Okay, tractor stores. Now this. John Deere 4760. And so I think it was November, like around the 15th. It's in central Indiana. Ted Everett had to sell. 486 hours on it, actually. Highest auction price I've ever seen on a 4760 was 76000 You guys remember what this one brought? 85.5. So it almost went 10K over. Now the story on it was a local doctor bought it, just never used it, sad. But when stuff like this shows up, it's just amazing uh, the interest in it. You maybe saw this one, I think it was February 3rd, a couple Saturdays ago. Uh, this was in Ohio, I think, northeast Ohio. 76 Black Stripe Open Station with under 3,000 hours. I knew that was a pretty good recipe for success. So 27,000 is, is the price on that. And I think that's the second highest price I've ever seen on 1066. I maybe remember this combination. I, I hit this on an egg day last week, last Monday. <clears throat> but the sale was it was an auction in Southeast North Dakota that Steph has had. Really clean red stuff. And on the left, that's a 45 quad track. I don't remember what year it was. It had low hours, about 233. It was the highest auction price on a quad track I've seen since the sale I covered back December 7th of 2011. So again, there's that, that bump we're seeing. Now the same auction on the right had an MX210 and 04 model, 2,800 hours of change, about 71,000. Highest price, 27 months. So again, it's very similar theme, but again, it's nice condition. That's what we're seeing. Now this one made me smile. It was last Saturday. It was in, uh, I, think, I think it was Murfreesboro, Illinois. It was a 64 model, 4020. Now it's interesting because the local FFA chapter, 
four years ago that totally rebuilt this thing, all the parts. And supposedly they spent over 40 k on it, and then they raffled it off. And this guy, this guy's dad got And he reached out some time ago, I knew he was looking to sell it. And he had an offer at 18000 right before the auction. He almost took it. He was like, no, I'm going to put it on the sale. And you can see it brought uh, 28000 bucks last Saturday. Another fun example here, I think this was, again, early December, our friends at Sullivan Auctioneers. The very first serial number, 1486, they sold. And they were really smart. They sent me a video before the sale. And I, I talk about this a lot, but when you personalize what you sell, it makes it worth more money. And what they had here was mom, grandma, and daughter. And uh, the head of the, the farm that passed away but they just talked about it, and that's Matt Sullivan there, and Grandma was awesome. They were, they were doing a video, and Grandma got talking about something else kind of a little bit, and she was smiling, but we were kind of getting an inside look at the family. And then the next day, it sells for 31.5, and actually, it would have sold higher. Like proxy bid that day cut out it was a Saturday, and across the country, the online bidding went out. And I know a guy, a uh, high collector in Minnesota, right by where I live, he called and he initially offered them 40 afterwards, and they said no. I think he got up to 50, and they still said no. But he just would have kept it, and he would have bid until he got it. But it, even as it is, 31.5, that's the highest price I've ever seen on 1486. But they told the story of it before the sale, which was really smart. And on the topic of serial numbers, I was in uh, Austin, Texas, a year ago, December. John Deere has their art text book, they do it every two years. And I'm walking down this hall, and I come upon these two tractors. And that's the last 7810 and the last 4960 deer made. One has 18 hours, and one has six. So I'm talking to the people of deer, and I listened. We talked for a while, and I said, I tried to say it nicely, but I'm, I told them, don't think you know what you have here. And they know they have a piece of history, but I'm like, you guys can sell tickets to come see this stuff. You know, people just want to be by it, but it reminds them of 20 years ago, 25 years ago. So we post the story, did a little video, you can find it out on YouTube. And here's what I love about you guys. We, we need this conversation going. So the day after I post a YouTube video, a buddy of mine in Denver, Iowa, right outside of Waterloo, sends me this picture. He goes, hey, machine to beat. He goes, look at this. He goes, that on the right, that's the 4960 that we just looked at. That's the day it came off the line. And that's the last 4760, same day, came off the line. And my buddy Romain said, wouldn't it be cool if we could find the 4760? So I put that story out, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We all react to it. And I got a phone call the next day. It took one day. But a salesman with Bodensteiner, Marty Stephan, Dyersville, calls me up and says, you know where it is. Let's come down to Dyersville. I'll show it to you. So I popped in the pickup, drove to Dyersville. Me out to Mark Falls Farm. That's Mark right there, great guy. And that was the tractor. And I said, Mark, when did you buy this? And he said, Oh, ten for original at auction. And I said, Do you remember on the sale bill? Did it say last serial number 4760? And he said, Oh, I, I don't really remember. And to me, I found that fascinating because again, now maybe it's because of social media, but if there's anything unusual about a piece of equipment, as a seller. You gotta, you gotta say it because it, it's definitely worth more money. And I, I told Mark, I said, you know what this is worth? And he smiled and said, I know what I said, I'm not looking to sell it. But we shot the video, and again, the, the people part is the fun thing. So Mark and his wife have three boys, and they have all John Deere equipment, except for one tractor in the corner. And their 12 year old son, Carter, that's his uh, 190 XP. So I, I did a little video with. With Carter, I said, Carter, your whole family is John Deere tractors. Your grandpa, your dad. What's the deal? Why, why do you have Alice? And he said, and he was a very articulate young guy. I think you would have talked to me on video for about my father. We were filming, and he said, Well, machine repeat. I just like watching me. And he told me all about it and everything he's done to it. Great young kid. That was really fun. But uh, I'll just leave you guys with this topic of again personalizing your equipment. My, my advice to you, well, I should tell the story here actually. 
I've, I've been talking about personalizing equipment and how there's value in it for a couple years now. And a dealer friend in Kansas heard me give a talk like that. He was listening, and a couple months later, he sent me an email. He said, Pete, I think I got it. And it was this guy. That's his customer. I can't remember the dude's name. Let's call him Fred. So Fred trades in his 95 cents. Nice amount. But my guy, Kurt, at the dealership, knows Fred and knows that Fred cleans the cab with a toothbrush. Okay? So what Kurt did is he got him standing by, he took his cell phone, and he said, Hey, Fred, tell me about your combine. Blah, 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 talks about it. And then Kurt said, Tell me how you clean the cab. And now Fred said, Well, I'd like to take a toothbrush in there, and I get up, and he's like, Well, why do you do that? He said, well, I just I want to make sure I get around all the dials and do this, right? So it was, this was not Hollywood. This is just Fred talking. But guess what happened? Combine sold within a week, and guess what the price point? Right, what they were asking for. So whether you're an equipment dealer or a farmer trading or selling something or an auctioneer, isn't the goal to sell as high as you can? And just think about it. When we personalize what we're selling, like if you're selling your house, or think about it this way: all the farm retirement auctions you've gone to your, your whole life, if it's in your area here, say East Central Iowa. And if it's a guy everybody likes, oh, the Smiths, they're a good family. Everything is clean. How, how, how are prices on that sale? They're sky high, right? And why? Because everybody knows and respects the Smith family. So you're, you're not just buying a tractor. It's, it's Bob Smith's tractor. So we've got to start thinking about this with our equipment. So when you're planting in the spring, whether your planter is old or new or whatever, or same in the fall, what you really should do is get video on your cell phone of you, nice sunny day here in eastern Iowa, you're planting, you're harvesting in the fall. Just get the video and then just keep it. So two years from now, when you want to trade it in to your friends in Sinclair or whoever, you know, and they'll, get, they'll take 50 great pictures of it. But how about some video of you behind the wheel on a sunny day in eastern Iowa? Because right now, if you look on our website, there's 1,100 S670s for sale. But there might be only one that's yours, that, that video, or maybe you standing by and talking about. And I think that's the next piece of a, a listing for sale, is, is not just the video or that you started up there and rolls back and forth. I want to see it in the video. And even better would be drone footage. So if you know young folks who like to play with drones, buy them dinner, buy them lunch, buy them a beer, whatever. Just get them on the farm, have them shoot drone video of you doing your thing. And then keep the video because that's going to make your equipment worth more money. And at our website, machinerypeat.com, we're working behind the scenes to facilitate some of these things, whether you sell private, so we're working on for sale by owner section, or on the dealer side, if they take it from you and sell it that way. So, uh, again, we just really appreciate you guys using our website and uh, we support all these years. Anybody have any questions before I shut up? Oh, you guys have been great. Again, I just want to thank Hills for, for having me on. I'll stick around a little bit. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Really appreciate it.